Hi, David. Welcome to Doing It at Home. Hi, guys. How's it going today? Great. We're awesome. Yeah. yeah really excited. Awesome. Excited to be hanging out with here with you to chat. We got some good stuff to talk about. So thanks again for, for hanging out. Awesome. Pleasure to be on here. And uh, I love the work you guys do. And I'm excited to kick around some of these ideas and play with the topics that come up. Sweet. Yes, because these are relevant topics. And especially for us here at Doing It at Home, being that Matthew is equal parts of this experience. And from day one, his perspective is at the forefront, just like mine. And so this is for the fellas. This is for the dads, the baby daddies, the the supporters, the birth partners. This is for them. This is a really a conversation for them. So if you are the birthing person, if you're the mom listening right now, pause, get them involved, get them <laughs> listening with you, or yeah. you know, send this in a nice email or text, send them the link to this because it's really great for them to listen to this conversation because this is really about them and how they can show up in the pregnancy and birth experience and, and feel great about that and feel confident in their roles because that's really important because you're kind of an equal part of this whole experience. And so um, especially right now in our culture, I feel like the, the dad, his experience and his perspective is taken into account a lot more than, say, our parents' generation when dad waited out, you know, in the hospital waiting room with the cigars and had no involvement in the birth experience. So yeah. that all being said, David, could you just give us a quick snapshot of, of you and your journey and why you're doing what you're doing? Sure. Thank you. It's a great intro too. Um, and you're so right. The dads of yesteryear were left in the waiting room. When I was uh, a baby, my dad was allowed to hold me for 30 minutes only under direct supervision um, while I was in the hospital with my mom wow. per day, 30 minutes per day total. And uh, he would say the nurse would sit there staring at him with her watch ticking. And soon as it like ding, she was like, she would scoop me up and run me back to my mom. So very different world today. Thankfully, I think all of us guys are so much more appreciative of having the opportunity to get involved. Um, and however, this is where it gets tricky. So many of us, especially during that first ramp up through that first pregnancy and childbirth, we have a lot of interest, but we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to be, how to, uh, how to show up and the things to say. And we kind of feel like we're perpetually guessing and then guessing wrong. And like what, what worked quote unquote, they've, on X day doesn't work the next day. And it's a lot of just uncertainty in the air. And, uh, and that's kind of where I was hoping to add something that was helpful. So my, you know, going through our birth experience, a lot of times I felt like I was doing the right thing, but it just didn't land. And other times I was, you know, throwing a dart at a board in the dark and it seemed to, you know, my wife really responded positively mm -hmm. to the random thing I was trying. And I think a lot of guys out there just appreciate a little, more guidance coming from the, from another guy. Um, and just some understanding of like, yeah, this is, this is tricky. This is a brand new world for all of us. And with new opportunities come new challenges. And it's, uh, it's helpful to have uh, a guide, even if it's a, somebody who's only been on the trail one time and in, uh, in front of you, they can still provide you some good uh, heads up and tips and tricks. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where I'm coming from trying to help make the guy's journey a little bit easier, but also you know, their pregnant partner's journey, that teamwork is one of the main themes that runs throughout my book, uh, all the way through baby and beyond. And so that sense of teamwork is really what I'm shooting for. When you were, when you and your wife were pregnant, getting ready for that first birth, talk to me a little bit about your sense of desire for preparation. Like, did you feel like, all right, I need to jump into the classes. I need to read a whole bunch of books because I don't know anything that's going on. Or did you have more of this, you know, like, okay, I have instincts and I'm just going to kind of wing it. Where were you on that spectrum? Uh, Matthew, I think I was, I was the spectrum. Okay. I, I, there were days <laughs> when I felt like this is easy peasy, you know, what's everybody, what's the fuss. And then there are other days, had I had any hair, I would have been pulling it out. <laughs> like, I, I am so in the weeds right now. Like, I think. I thought this was a good idea and it's turning out not, or it was a good idea five minutes ago, but things have changed and now it's not. And, you know, kind of in that whirlwind. And so I, I, we did birth classes. We took two different birth classes. Um, we had a doula actually we ended up going, we had, we ended up with our third doula because the first two each found out they were pregnant shortly after we had started with them. And they were like, I need to, your birth, your due date's a little too close to where mine is. Um, but you know, then other times I was like, Oh, I'm not the pregnant one. Like I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. 
you know, like I'm the same dude I was three months ago, six months ago, and I'm trying to be helpful, but I don't, I don't know what, what helpful is. And it's, it was my wife's first pregnancy. So there are a lot of times she didn't know what she needed. She it was hard yeah. to articulate these feelings that come with growing a human inside of you and all of the uncertainty and anxiety that comes with that. Um, so it was, I was, Matt, I was the entire spectrum, Matthew, any given day, any given minute, it could be anywhere, but my, my interest was high. I really wanted to be, I really wanted to show up and be that supportive partner. Um, I was all in on that, but the ability and the training was, was not high. <laughs> yeah. Got that. Yeah. I'm not a man, so I don't know, but I would, having been with one for a while and been through a birth with one, I imagine that it can be very challenging to to navigate this from your perspective. And, and I have a lot of compassion for that, especially now being on the other side of birth, because um, most men are not told a lot about birth growing up. They probably have never seen one or seen one in a in a healthy, empowering kind of way. And, you know, you won't know any of the physical um, aspects of it. You know, there's that saying that, you know, a, a woman becomes a mother when she finds out she's pregnant and a man becomes a father when the baby's actually here, you know? So I get that there's that, you know, you have your own gestational kind of process. And then on top of that, I imagine it, it's probably very challenging to feel like you don't know and to, and to be in that vulnerable, vulnerable place of, I need help or I need guidance on this. And then, and then even, you know, maybe you're having the conversations with the midwives and the doulas and your partner, which is great. And I would, I would guess that it's beneficial to have a conversation with another man about it, with another father. And so that's why I love David, that you're bringing this perspective to the birth world and you're, you're providing your, your wisdom and you're doing birth work in a unique way to support the partners so that maybe they can let some of that guard down. You know, it's kind of like, you know, men don't want to ask for directions in the car. Now we're talking <laughs> about this thing of, you know, yeah. birthing a baby. I can imagine that's just 10 X in terms of, you know, you don't want to want to admit you, you feel nervous or you don't know what you're doing because you also don't want to impact your partner. Like there are a lot of balls that you're juggling. So I just want to acknowledge that, that uh, I, I have a lot of empathy and compassion for that unique experience. Well, I, thank you, Sarah. And, and I think that that empathy and that compassion you speak about there is so helpful for us guys to hear and feel that we have some grace. We have some room to sort of like fumble around. Um, as well as for our partners too. And, and, you know, the, the amount of information and support and help out there, like, Oh, for, you know, for, Oh, Hey mama, you found out you're pregnant. Now what? And it's like rows at the bookshelf yeah. and yeah. there's, you know, friends that, and family. And there's, there's a lot of people that I feel that mamas can like reach out to, to get some of that. Like, Oh, I know it's hard for you. This is, this is a tough time, but having, there's not that voice for a lot of guys like, Hey guys, I know this is hard for you. I know you're having a tough time. It's like, Oh, enjoy, enjoy your single life where you can, or yeah. you better get yep. that out of your, you know, all that sort of like broness. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, thanks. I mean, I guess, you know, so that compassion, that grace, that, that spaciousness, I think is something that's good for all expecting couples to kind of give and share to each other. Uh, as much as they can, especially from some of the new mama's perspective, the the pregnant partner. I know for my wife, she had a lot of anxiety. She had a lot of concern and worry. Is this the right vitamin? You know, which cheese, like everything was, every decision felt so fraught with like mm. peril. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times in that space of anxiety, when, when somebody's feeling that anxiety, it's not easy for them to also give space to themselves or their partner. So I think there's a lot of a lot of challenges for expectant parent, you know, newly pregnant parents to go through and allowing and recognizing that, Hey guys, this is tough for you. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of unknowns. You're, you're, you're going to fumble a yeah. lot and that's perfectly okay. And let's give each other a little breathing room for that. And, um, and I think that's a very important message to send out there. So thank you for, for speaking to that right away. I really appreciate that as do I'm sure some of your guy listeners are just relaxing. They're mm. they're waiting to be told you're doing it wrong. Do this, and so he- hearing a little spaciousness around that, I think invites everybody in a little bit closer. Mm. Yeah. Before we started the official recording, David, we were talking about some of the workshops that you're doing, and you know, 
I think it's so important for for guys, you know, dads to be who are feeling like, you know, nervous about that role and they don't know what to do to to be able to have a space to share that because, you know, mom and mom to be may not emotionally be in the space right. to be like it's okay if you fumble right but to hear it from you like if i go to one of your workshops and i hear you say that it's like oh damn okay i can actually relax like i can actually you know not critique myself and not have this impossibly high standard that i have to get everything perfect and then be frustrated when i don't and so i think it's it's so important for for fathers to be to to get introduced to conversations like this to for someone to pass them the flyer of the workshop for them to you know explore different things and just kind of put their 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 feet in the you know getting prepared pool just to see what's out there so that if again if they're feeling those those nerves and that anxiety when they think about birth time or when they think about fatherhood to be able to seek out and find a space whether it's online or in person where there are people saying, hey, it's okay. Like, it's cool if you feel this way. It's cool if you don't know what the hell to do. It's cool if you mess some stuff up. Like, it's going to happen, and it's happened to all of us, and you're still okay. So I, I think, you know, we're not really getting into the workshops and stuff that you're doing, but, you know, when they do come back online, I think everybody in your area should go check that type of thing out um, because I think having that space is so, so important so that we can let go of the the garbage junk and then be able to show up the way that we want, however it is, but just like show up the way that we want. Yeah. yeah and, and Matthew, that, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sarah. I didn't mean to cut you off. Mm-mm, all you. I was it that Matthew, that the, that spaciousness, I think we've touched on two of the three most important topics of the whole thing. One is that earnestness that, Hey, I want to learn. Yeah. yeah. I want, I want to get engaged here. And two, and give me some space to be a little bit messy as I figure it out. And, and I'm trying to get comfortable with what I'm hearing and how that, what does that look like? But then the third thing is, is getting some good, I, I don't want to be too, like, say the word training or like, um, you know, good information. Um, but one of the things I learned back in one of my previous chapters of my life as a business owner is that it's not fair to hold somebody to account on performing tasks they haven't been trained adequately. Mm. And so ultimately, from my point of view, um, it's on the point of the training and the trainer to make sure that the information is being presented. There's a chance to practice before you start telling somebody, no, you didn't do it right. And I feel that our culture, especially around this, there's a lot of that quick, no, you didn't do it right for us guys as we're trying to learn but there's not that 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 doesn't follow like really good training and um, an engagement with the guys to help them figure what this stuff out is. So, you know, have the earnestness, the aspirations, the spaciousness to learn, and then that training. And that's where your your guys' information can be so helpful. My book's helpful. There's other things out there um, that are attempting to give the guys the the tips and the tricks and the and the things to do so that they can develop these skills and and can get better connected to their partner and better prepared for all these things coming up. So I think the three of those things are that triangle where any guy can ask himself, how am I, how am I showing up with my aspirations? Am I, am I really interested in getting better here? Mm -hmm. And they can work with their partner, ask for a little spaciousness or just communicate that that's what they need. But then that third step is where, what what are you reading? What are you doing? Are you taking workshops? Are you going to classes? Um, Are you asking your partner where what's important to her, like how, how, Hey, darling, how can I show up better differently X so that, so that you can feel more supported. So I think those three things are each equally important for the whole thing. Yeah. And, and that, that information piece, that third part of the triangle can be tough. Cause like you said, you go to the bookstore and there's a whole shelf of books geared towards mom. And then, you know, there might even be a section geared towards dads and partners, but where do you start? How do you mm. know what information is going to be quality. I mean, I guess you got to go through a whole bunch of books and see what really resonates. And um, so I I think it's interesting, your business background, how it plays into the work that you're doing now, understanding the importance of of proper training and how, like you've mentioned, if you aren't trained well, you can't necessarily expect them to execute in the moment. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's that's fantastic. Well, you know, the the book choice 
dilemma is a great topic there, Matthew, because I, I, I looked at some of those books. Yeah, me too. And, you know, my wife had a, a, a giant like this encyclopedic book. I'm not going to mention any specific titles mm-hmm. here. And so I went and found one of similar and I opened it up and I'm like, just, it all just turned into Charlie Brown's teacher. It's like, <laughs> yes. wah, 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 week yeah. 17, a hiccup, wah, wah. I'm like, uh, I mean, okay, but I'm not like, I'm not coming at this from like a medical curiosity background where yeah. like that really lands for me. Like, yeah. oh, I, I'm a, oh, cool. You know, 17 weeks or hiccuping, like, like, okay, but like, how does that help me today? Yeah. Um, and so that was kind of where I saw my, I, I saw an opening or an opportunity to, to try to find a way to communicate more specific things that are like traction. Like, like this is a thing you can do mm-hmm. that will probably make your experience and your partner's experience a little bit smoother, um, balance with like, Hey, if you, if you change the way you're thinking about this and think about it this way, that shift of perspective might open up more clarity for you on other opportunities, how you can step up and step in. Um, so I tried to really find that sweet spot for my book to fit on that shelf, uh, and not be some imposing encyclopedic thing that you got to like lift with your legs, Hmm. but also be more than just a glib series of boob and beer jokes like okay those books are out there this is this is not that yeah. so that combination of like perspective information plus specific like do try this and see if it works yeah. um i felt was would have worked for me so i basically i wrote the book that i wish somebody else had written when i was out there looking along that shelf yeah, like, yeah. what's as bad as wide as my thumb and is not too far in either direction here you know Oh, that's, that's a great. great space to be in. I think a lot of people will resonate with that and do resonate with that. Yeah. Um, we have heard hundreds of birth stories on the podcast and you know, the way partner can show up can look lots of different ways. And I think that's a combination of, you know, what birthing partner wants and needs and what she articulates as well as honoring the personality and the desires of, of dad, because, you know, I don't think it'll work for a dad to try to serve a certain role that really doesn't align with his values or his personality or his best attributes, you know, where he can really shine. So how, how does a dad figure out the best way for him to support? Because we, we have heard a mix. We've heard those who are right there, you know, holding, that's what Matthew did, holding me as I birthed Maya or the dad who's just there like just a presence or, you know, how, how do you think, how do you guide fathers on figuring out what kind of role to take? Yeah. Especially when it's first time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even asking that question, Sarah, is a great start because so much of what comes out, what I, what I heard out there during my first, you know, pregnancy journey was sort of like a one size fits all. Like you need to, like you said, you need to be down in there and catch the baby and cut the cord and, Uh, you know, I was cool with that, but I had some friends that were like, no, man, like I'm not doing any of that. Like, I don't, I don't, I will faint. I will straight up faint at the sight of blood and, and like, I'm no, I'm not. That's just telling me to do that as if that's the only way to show up is to gown up and get in there or whatever. Like, that's not really going to work for me. So just even asking that question is a great start. Like, Hey guys, like what are, what is your comfort range here? What do you feel your strengths are in this relationship or just in any relationship where you feel like you can shine because you feel comfortable rather than you're like trying to imitate or replicate some ideal that it just doesn't vibe with you. Um, so I think asking the question is a great start. Also checking with your partner, what are your partner's expectations? What's the best way for you to comfort your partner or to be connected? And then the key word I think you mentioned there, Sarah, was presence. I think regardless of what the guys are doing, having an engaged presence where you're, you're present and connected with your partner. There's been some discussion on what your, the range of your, you know, physical range, like how far down to the South end, as I've heard some guys say, are you planning on being, are you going to stay at the North end? Um, the mantra I, in the book, big idea, number 10, I mentioned big, I, I mentioned there's, I, there's perspectives and tips. So it's big ideas and dad tips are the two main topics, but big, I big, big idea. Number 10 is just, Hey guys, your mantra at the birth experience, starting with that labor is threefold. It's be attentive, be calm and be competent. So attentive and calm is that presence connection. Competent 
goes into the, what you are going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And that's where there's a lot of range of like, what, what, where is the guy's comfort zone? What is the partner expecting? If you have a birth team, what, where, where do you fit in there as, as the dad? And mostly you fit in as being attentive and calm. That's that engaged presence. I mean, I know for my wife, especially in our first baby, she did, she was squeezing the life out of my hand and she did not want me to go anywhere. Like at one point I was like, I'm going to need a catheter because I really need to pee and I, <laughs> but I'm not leaving my wife and yeah. I really don't want to pee myself. Yeah. So what's the role here, you know, but she wanted me right there and I was able to stay connected with her. She, there was times that I was the only person she could hear. So mm-hmm. I was kind of relaying some of the instructions from our birth team and just being in that like eye to eye, uh, our, my doula recommended like think honeymoon, but the, not the, the R rated version. Like you're, att- you're, you're looking into her eyes. You're really trying to soul share, so to speak. And that right there can carry the world, the weight of the world. You don't need to like yeah. hold a leg or catch a baby or cut a cord. If you can stay really connected, um, then you have the freedom to do those other things. But that connection is sort of that primary thing. So that engaged presence, I think, is the number one thing. Everything else is a distant second, in, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so curious that, this, I don't know if it's as much as a question, but just hearing it in your experience, like the guys that engaging in these types of things and kind of getting into that space is just so foreign. Like, mm. you know, gazing into their partner's eyes like that and, and getting into that empathic space to, it's just a foreign concept, you know? How, how have you communicated with guys like that who want to be, want to to support but maybe feel like this is just a little too emotional too touchy-feely this is too well however they're going to describe it but i want to support but i i'm like that stuff is just yeah it's uncomfortable for me how do you communicate with them how have you experienced and navigated that well i think matthew hit upon one of the number one challenges that all of us guys kind of tend to revolve around is like we think of do Mm. Yeah. rather than be. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, what do I need to do? Like, do I, you know, and do I adjust the pillow, get the drink of water? They're like, they're imagining themselves almost, almost like, you know, like they're like the bat boy, like they're ready to scurry around and they're not on the field, but they're like that helper. That's going to come do this or come do that. Like the do, 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 do. And, you know, and a lot of times those things are great. Like, you know, in the, one of the early birth classes we took, it was a lot of focus on what us guys could do. Mm-hmm which is a great outlet when us guys are feeling nervous energy, you know, it's like, Oh, I can, I can use my hands. I can adjust the pillow. I can, I can do something. Um, and that's kind of where that be competent part of the mantra comes in. Cause I get, I walk the guys through basically early labor signs onward, like early labor phase one, there's the transition, there's the, the crowning, like there's, there's, there's a series of steps that may happen quickly or slowly. So I try to pepper in with some like do stuff, but ultimately uh, I think the B thing is, the, is again, that question. And that's where that big idea is a shift in perspective. It's like, okay, guys, we all kind of like to do stuff. We stand back, we did something, we feel good about it. Now what's next on our list. Um, but I try to encourage them to not, not necessarily move out of that because it's largely impossible for a lot of us, mm-hmm. but at least move it to the side a smidge and just, try to practice that just being. And I, one of the things I say doing is breathe, breathe, yeah. breathe with your partner. That's a doing that creates a being and it, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a way in, so to speak. So breathe, be, be, hold hands. That's a doing, but it's a being. So anything that fosters that sense of like a very uh, visceral connection, it doesn't have to be necessarily emotional, but visceral, like in a tangible physical way. Um, I think those kind of things really do they do so much more than you might think like oh i'm holding a hand that counts as a one i'm like no that's like a nine like you're like you're if you're holding a hand and you're and you're listening and looking you you really don't have to do anything else you may feel it's a one so you're looking for nine other things to do but just start with some of these um being type exercises and i think that paves the way for a lot of the 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 other doing things become like less pertinent but sometimes you're called in like yeah. You know, with our first, I had one arm here and I had a other arm around the leg and I'm <laughs> helping they, they try to put an oxygen mask on my wife's face and she was not having that. So I was like 
fending that off. And I'm like trying to like track the beeps in the room. And, and, uh, I was doing a lot. I was, I, was, I, I, I joke with my wife and she likes to joke with me. Like after our baby was born and everything chilled down and calmed down, I was, I felt guilty. I looked, I was like, babe, I, you know, I know you just had a baby and, <laughs> but can I sit down for a few minutes? I, my legs are killing me. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm really tired. And I was, I was honest and see yeah. And my doula just started laughing. She was like, David, go ahead and sit down. You, you're fine. And it's okay to ask that question. But I, yeah. I literally felt guilty yeah. because like I was standing there. She birthed a baby, no meds, like all natural. But yet I felt like f- totally fatigued. Like my leg was shaking. I needed to sit down. So there was a, there's plenty of doing guys. Like, totally. don't worry. The yeah. Being isn't instead of doing it's just the context, the ground with which the doing can be more effective. Yeah. Oh, I think that was so awesome. That was so uh, grounded and understandable and digestible. And yet when implemented effectively can make a world of difference in the whole experience. So I really love that you went into that. I have a question for you that comes up in our space a lot. What coaching would you offer to a dad who is maybe not on board with all of the decisions around the birth or isn't fully on board with what some of mom wants in the birth. Obviously, one of the biggest things we hear here is home birth or not. But then even if it were cool on the location, there can be nuances within the birth plan that mom might want that dad isn't comfortable with. And so what's the balance there of expressing how you feel about it as well as honoring your partner? Um, How do you coach someone in that scenario? You guys have the best questions. That's another, that's another like home run question there, Sarah, because it, it speaks to so much of what I went through and okay. what many of the guys I've talked to, you know, for example, uh, uh, my wife is a sensitive to pain person in her normal daily life. Like she stubs a toe and boom, <laughs> it's like, she's down, there's tears. I'm like, do we need to go to the hospital? She's like, no, it's just my toe. And so that was the context. And both of us were really on board of as natural birth as possible. Like if we could check the option of birthing in a barn, we would have checked that one. Um, but a big part of that was like the no pain meds and everything. And as we were getting further along in the pregnancy, you know, I had a lot of doubts about that because, well, there's doubts about that. And then, but this, the correlate part is a lot of us guys were told we need to be the everything you need to be the protector. You need to, you know, if you're in a, if you're in a, birth center or hospital, you need to make sure that everything that's happened, birth, you need to be the guy who's doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's a lot of pressure for us guys. Like I'm not an OB, I'm not a trained medical professional. I'm not, I don't know if an intervention is, is medically like, who am I to say, no, mm. don't do that. What's my training? You know, I'm not the doula. I'm not the midwife. I'm the, I'm the dad. And that's what I really want to focus on. Um, so it's, we get kind of thrown all these responsibilities that we're, we're certainly not qualified to fully take on. Um, but that's where having those conversations and having like one of my favorite dad tips in there is number seven, dude, hire a doula. Like mm. a doula is the, the best thing you can do for yourself and your partner. Cause I was able to go speak to my doula separately and, and say, mm. like, Barb, like, I really want to be all in on this. Like, I really want I'm happy to say you can do it, babe, but I need to believe that because yeah. otherwise it comes across like it ends in a question like you can do it, babe. Like, right. Mm-hmm. I did. I didn't say the right part, but that's implied. And Barb was so great. She's like, Dave, trust me. I've, I've worked with you and Jen for a little while. Like she's a, a strong, capable, competent woman. We women know how to give birth when there's not a lot of clutter in the way. And David, you're right. Your, your unexpressed doubt will be felt as clutter. So what, what, let's talk about that. Yeah. And so she just kind of walked me through like a birthing woman is not the same woman who stubbed her toe two months ago and went down in heat. There's primal, powerful energies that get, cha- that get channeled. And on a, you know, on a chemical level, like oxytocin has a lot of um, power to minimize. You have sensation, but it's not pain or you have pain, but it's not suffering. There's, there's grades along here we can work with. So my doula kind of like coaching me up on the side, I was able to let that doubt go because a, I felt I didn't need to be the, the, be the everything. And then also B, I had my, my doula, my wingman. She was my wingman too. I joke, I was like, you're a wingman from heaven. Like where are your angel wings? Cause I know they're in there somewhere. So having that birth team 
and having those frank conversations with them, maybe separately to address those concerns that you don't want to bring to your partner. Like, Hey babe, I have a lot of doubts that you can do this. Like yeah. that's not, that's not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have those, that's okay to own and accept them, sure. but try to address them through your birth team that somebody, you know, is going to be there, not just a book, but like a, a, a wise um, counselor person. But you, you, you definitely want to get those addressed one way or another, because you can't be standing there in the birth room, pushing that doubt into the world. You got to, yeah, that's where the time of confidence comes in. And that's where having your birth team right there with you as you're kind of like check in um, is fantastic. So again, great question, but the birth team, I think the doula having those frank conversations is a good way to, to at least start to work through it. Yeah. Well, I think that's fantastic as well because, you know, dad and partner might have their doubts and their own feelings and all the things that they're working through. And then, when you bring them into the conversation with soon to be mom, who's also dealing with her yeah. stuff, that could be explosive and that mm-hmm. could create breakdown. And so what I'm hearing you say is go and take your stuff and, and process it with a third party, process it with somebody else who can give you some perspective, who can help you to, you know, see things from a different way so that you have the potential to release the doubt or shift your belief. And then you can go back to mom to be and have a conversation that, perhaps won't end up in a breakdown, you know, the way that it, it, it had in the past. So I think that's, that's fantastic. And just honestly, I just think that's great life advice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is applied into this, into this birth situation. But sure. um, absolutely, you know, talk through those things, but it just may not be like, you may not be able to, to have a, a, a centered conversation with your partner in that moment when you're feeling so emotionally charged and and emotionally driven by the fears. And so, you know, alleviating a little bit of those and then coming back, I think is just awesome Mm. advice. Yeah. And Matthew, one thing you touched on there that I want to echo is, is getting as clear about that stuff beforehand. Yeah. So you don't want to sit there and I've seen, I, I am guilty of this as a lot of us guys are, we have some concerns or doubts, but we don't want to like, we don't want to go to war over this one topic. So we decide we're just going to like not really get into it, but also now you're in the birth room or you're at, or the baby's coming. And now that unexpressed doubt is, is activated first by some reason. Yes. And now you're over here. Like, I oh, mean, I knew I should have fucking said something about this. I, yeah. sh- I know I should have said something about that. Or, uh, you know, I, 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 this is exactly what I thought was going to happen. You get, you start to get in this like rap, you know, this like story oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and you're disconnected from what's happening. So getting as clean on that stuff as possible beforehand. And then, you know, again, with the duel, like, hey, I'm feeling nervous here. Like, say that. Yeah. Even just saying it goes a long way. Um, or the other, but it's a midwife or whoever your team is. Like, it's okay to be a little bit open with them, too, because just opening up takes that pressure off. But maybe it's something that they can, that they have an easy answer. Like, oh, no, this is, we mm-hmm. see this all the time. This mm-hmm. is, she's, she's great. Mm-hmm. Because, and just real quick. A lot of times people tend, guys tend to forget that just because mama is expressing a lot of energy and she may be yelling and screaming and grimacing, it doesn't mean she's like writhing in pain and you need to go do something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of talk about marathons. If you've ever been watched one of your friends run a marathon or had the pleasure or from my point of view, displeasure of actually running one, <laughs> like mile 22, nobody's having a good time. Like they're like, puking they're shitting their pants they're like throwing water they're tripping like none of that looks good like all of that if you didn't know what's happening you would think you need to save this person from whoever's chasing them right um but if you know it's a marathon and the goal is there is struggle there is challenge or suffering but that's what it looks like then then you can hey they run by like having the the worst seconds of their life. And you're like, yeah, you can do it. All right. Woo. It's the same (laughs) sort of vibe in the birth room. If you know your partner's expressions of pain and discomfort are an expected part of the process and you don't need to rescue them, but you need to be attentive and helpful. And obviously you don't want to get out the horns and be cheering and spinning the thing around, but being that present engaged partner and checking in with your doula or your midwife or your other trusted birth team to see, they'll let you know if you need to do more than that. So just yeah. trust them and their expertise and your presence and your pregnant and your birthing partner's capacity, and that that trust can carry a lot of the carry a lot of the weight of the circumstances. Mm. Two comments on what you said, 
you know, with our with our with our podcast on the interviews that we've done, we have a lot of moms who will say, you know, I was yelling yeah. and I was so vocal and the things that were coming out of my mouth, I've never made noises like that, but I wasn't in pain. I was in it was this it was uncomfortable, it was discomfort, but I wouldn't call it pain. So just to, you know, what you were saying about you might see somebody expressing in a way you've never seen before and you're just thinking, "Oh my gosh, they're being ripped in half. I need to do everything to stop this." But in reality, you know, their body has so many things that's helping them go through this experience and they may not even be relating to it in the same way that you are visually experiencing it. And then something that you said also David, I wanted to to highlight, it's okay for us guys to have one-on-one conversations with the doula, the midwife, the doctor, like we can have our own side conversations and, you know, our own relationship with them. It doesn't always have to be with, you know, mom present. And I think that's great because you may not, you know, guys may not be thinking like, oh yeah, I can kind of schedule my own conversation with the doula to have my questions answered. I didn't really thought about doing that. But that was just something that you said real quick in your comment that I wanted to bring back up so that guys listening can, can you know, they can, um, they can consider that for themselves if there are questions that they have or fears they want to express that they don't want to say around their partner, just go and have a one-on-one conversation and get all that stuff out. I want to wrap up with a couple of questions that we have from our community. Sweet. And I feel like we've addressed some of these already, but I just want to hit it home because maybe someone's asking this question right now in their head and there's, you know, anything else we can add to it. So one question is how can fathers be supported too? And I love that that's even a question, you know, like how can the dad be supported in this? He's going through a birth too. You know, he is being birthed as well. So um, anything, David, in addition to what we've shared, you know, utilizing the birth team, having those one-on-one conversations that you would add to how dad can get support as well. Yeah, that's such a great question from your uh, one of your listeners there, your viewers, because it is, I don't have a quick answer for that one. I mean, there's a lot of, I think other guys that have recently gone through yeah. pregnancy, it has to be recently, because if the kid's like two, th- th- that, that, that dad has lost all touch with what where he was <laughs> two years ago. Uh, he's going to have some, some pithy answers that may be true. I mean, they're not, they're not unhelpful, but he's, he's, lived, he's got, he's had you know, 800 nights of different days yeah. and nights of different challenges between <laughs> now and then. And all of them have been the biggest ones he's dealt with and they will continue to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so recent brand new dads, um, the birth professionals, the doulas, the midwives, people on your birth team, um, even your partner's friends who may, especially if they already have babies or there's somebody who knows your partner really well. Um, but I think the, the bigger question there is encouraging guys to reach out for that, mm-hmm. to yeah. look for that rather than just sort of feeling like, I don't know what to do, period. It's, I don't know what to do, period. Where can I look for help? Whether it's books, these type of podcasts and interviews with the birth community this, these days is so much more richer and nuanced and deeper. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's like the USA, uh, you know, Olympic basketball team the bench and the depth and the quality there is leagues beyond what it was, you know, 25 years ago. So there's plenty of great resources out there. The first step is being vulnerable and admitting to yourself, like just winging it is probably a pretty shitty idea here. <laughs> um, and then like, what can I do? And then that, that, that now you have the earnestness that we talked about earlier and you have the um, look, you're looking for the training and, that, and, and again, asking your partner or your birth team for a little space, like, Hey, I don't really know what I'm doing here. So yeah. a little bit of grace, a little bit of gentleness and some coaching, uh, all combined is really going to help me a lot. And I'm, mm-hmm. that's what I'm looking for. And I think that that guy who shows up like that is going to have a lot more success than the guy who just sits there and doesn't say anything. The guy who imagines he's got he fixed his car last week. So he's going to crush it being a brand new dad. And it's like that, 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 those don't, that, that, those guys are going to do less well. So try to f- get clear on that triangle we talked about and check in with yourself. Where am I on each of these three dots and what can I do to level up and to bring all of it forward? I think those guys are going to find themselves in much better position ultimately um, than the guys who don't do that. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's clear. I like that. And there could be some crossover with this question. <clears throat> 
Um, but it is a different position to be in as far as a birth partner if he is the main support. So we're talking there's just midwife and dad. There's no doula. There's no other. Because that is a lot of setup for a lot of people that we hear in our community. Like yeah. it's just the midwife right. and dad. So what are some tips for that dad? Uh, you know, that that guy, I, A, I think he's doing great. If he, if that's the position, like he's owning the responsibilities and the opportunities that come with that. Um, I think that's fantastic. Those guys are probably deeper into that triangle than some of the other guys out there. So I think right away, um, that guy's already positioning himself. He's probably been, has done his homework to be in that right place. But for that guy, I think, you know, this is just sort of a deeper echo that of what we talked about earlier a little bit is that the midwife has the training, mm-hmm. the experience, the expertise, and the sort of like um, mantle of authority to handle the aspects of childbirth. Um, what she doesn't have, what she, I'm assuming she, what she doesn't have is that long history of relationship, that deep trust, that, that you're the person I want to have a baby with vibe that the dad does. So that's where the dads I think can really shine is owning your role and its limitations. Um, stepping in where you're able to like being part of the team, catching the baby, you and the midwife, you can be right down there. If that's what you want to do, you can, you can get naked and get in the tub too. Awesome. Do it. Um, and remember that your the limits of your role is you need to be that support partner. So that's where that mantra of you know, be attentive, be calm, and then be competent. I think that when in doubt, check in on that. If you don't go to step three without, don't worry about being competent. If you're not calm and you're freaking out, like yeah. let's back it up a little bit, be attentive first and be check in. Are you calm? Now you can act with wisdom and like that sort of like Zen perfect touch as opposed to just flailing around and hoping one of the seven things you just did over the past five seconds might've been helpful more so than the other six that weren't. So mm-hmm. again, just attentive, calm, and then competent. Yeah. That's so great. There's so many yeah. rich, like I said, actionable things, you know, like the, that, that balance of the doing and the being like, tell me something to do. And then by doing that thing, I'm communicating to my partner. I'm here for it. I'm with you. I'm in this experience and, you know, creates that space for, for birth to, to unfold. And then everything after that, you know, we've experienced this personally, you know, how we experienced our pregnancy, how we planned for our birth, had our birth that has carried into our parenthood journey into yeah. the continuation of our marriage and our partnership. Like it doesn't stop there. So I think it's something great to remember for both, both partners that what you're doing now is not just about now it's, it's about going forward as well into this journey. So, um, these are some really great action items and, um, I'm so grateful to you for sharing them with us. I want to make sure that we point people in the direction of you and how to learn more about you, the book, your workshops, et cetera. So can you share a little bit of that as we close? Sure. Sure. Um, again, my name is David Arell. Uh, my book is called welcome to fatherhood, the modern man's guide to pregnancy, childbirth and fatherhood. And um, the website is just www.welcometofatherhood.com. The book has been available in paperback and Kindle and the audio book finally got released last week. Nice. I know so many guys like, look, dude, you know, <laughs> you probably got some good stuff. I'm not reading the book. We get it. So if you <laughs> get me an audio book or whatnot, I'm, I'm all in that. So that's out there now. Um, I'm not too active on the social media front. It's a, it's a place I need to invest a little bit more energy um, so I'm out on the Instagram and Facebook under welcome to fatherhood. Um, you can find me there, but you're not, you'll find a lot more stuff on the website or, or these great, uh, you know, conversations with folks like you guys here. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is where I can really, you know, get a little bit more animated and excited about something I feel so strongly about. So thanks again for having me on. I love talking about this stuff as you guys can tell. And it's always fun to, to kick these ideas around. Yeah. Well, listen, we appreciate you. Uh, I I got a lot from this conversation and I'm just grateful that there's men like you out there who are dedicated to supporting fathers and men. I mean, it's it's so needed. It's so needed and it it helps families to be healthier and thrive. It helps the birth experience. There's so there's so many things that benefit when men and partners feel confident and feel prepared and feel empowered. So you know, thank you for, for dedicating your time and energy on this topic. And both Sarah and I are super appreciative mm-hmm. that you wanted to come here and hang out with us and have a cool conversation. So thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. 